Hello. Hello, Robert. Today is a special day. Today is Divine Mercy Sunday in the Catholic world, and it's the Orthodox Easter. It's a very important day. It's the most uh, glorious day in the liturgical year, recording the resurrection of Christ. We had it in the Western tradition last Sunday on Easter Sunday, and this year in the Eastern tradition, it's this Sunday, one week later. And uh, it is the greatest mystery because it gives the central proclamation of the Christian faith, the triumph of Christ over death. Yes. Well, we, we're coming live because we wanted to touch base with everyone and to wish them a happy Divine Mercy Sunday and an Orthodox Easter. Indeed, he has risen. And to share some news from our work that we did in October of 2022 when we were in Budapest. When we were in Budapest, we had several meetings and we introduced many people in the Orthodox and Catholic world together and the fruits of that are coming forth and so we wanted to introduce a particular person uh, to our platform um, about a new platform that has been formed in Budapest, Hungary. So in Budapest there is a new platform for Christian faith, hope, and charity with orthodox roots but quite close relations also with Catholic uh, teaching, and it's run by Philip Champion, who is a young Orthodox scholar, a student at Cambridge University in England in a PhD program. I mean, he received his MA from Cambridge, and now he's in Fribourg, Switzerland, and he's opening up a very significant new Christian website, channel, podcast, in the center of Europe, and he's working also closely with Metropolitan Hilarion Alfeyev of the Russian Orthodox Church in a very difficult time for modern history, but a time filled with the promise of Christ. And on this Easter Sunday in the Orthodox tradition, we invite Philip to talk about this new project. Hi, Philip. Hello, Welcome, Christ, Philip. Christ has risen. He has Indeed, risen. He has risen. Thank you for uh, having me. And uh, yeah, I have to say that um, I'm not just the, the founder, the main founder, of course, is Metropolitan Hilarion of Budapest uh, and Hungary. Uh, and I do try to help him as best as I can with this channel. All right. Well, how vast is your project and how many people does it involve and what are your goals? Can you tell us more about it? Right. Well, the name of the project is Jesus Portal because it is an Orthodox educational resource uh, focusing on the person of Jesus of Nazareth, his life, his teachings, and of course the sacrifice that he had given for us and for the sake of our salvation. So the project itself does not really involve too many people. We, uh, I think, have a team of maybe um, five, six people only. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, a few weeks ago, we uh, started a YouTube channel that has the same name, uh, Jesus Portal. It can be found on YouTube. And uh, hopefully in a few weeks, we're about to launch a separate website uh, under the same name, uh, Jesus Portal. And it focuses on Jesus, on the person of Christ. Yeah, this is also your area of study. You have investigated the historical Jesus does Jesus still, in the post-Christian world we have, attract the attention of, of everyone and of young people? What do you think? Certainly. I think the question that the Savior addressed to his disciples 2,000 years ago, who do people say that I am, is still the most relevant question that any person has to, in one way or another, um, answer uh, to himself. Um, because the, uh, the world is still divided with regard to that issue. We all have very different opinions about who Jesus of Nazareth was and is. And uh, in that sense, I think his uh, person and his teachings uh, are as relevant as ever. And when you speak about Jesus and the historical Jesus, what are you saying is the essential truth? 
Um, I think the whole point of the historical Jesus quest um, in biblical scholarship was to try and see, try and find the real Jesus behind the tradition of the church. Now, the quest of theologians, I think, who are involved in the historical Jesus is to, in my opinion, not just see uh, Jesus of history, but also look at how this reconstructed Jesus of history correlates with Jesus um, of faith. Because obviously we as Christians believe that uh, there is that this is a false dichotomy in many ways. Uh, Jesus of history on the one hand and Jesus of faith on the other hand. We believe in one Jesus. And in that way, I think we as Orthodox Christians and Catholic uh, Christians can reaffirm that the Jesus of faith is indeed the real Jesus of history. We, we think of the process of human history as one in which we progress, we have scientific achievements, we travel, we communicate in ways different than prior centuries. Is the Christian faith in the early 21st century still relevant to the progress of humanity? Um, I think, I strongly think that it is. And as Metropolitan Hilarion uh, likes to say, he believes that uh, the West still lives in pre-Christian time um, because the uh, Christianity has not abandoned, it has not been abandoned completely. And he believes, as far as I can um, tell, that it will never be abandoned completely, even in mm -hmm. the West, that it will flourish again um, because the teaching of Christ is not... Um, just relevant in the first century or 19th century. It will be relevant forever. And there will always be people uh, who will dedicate their lives uh, to Christ. Yeah, St. Paul in one place speaks of faith, hope, and love, faith, hope, and charity. And he says the greatest of these is charity. And what he says is that human beings, if they are confused, if they are uncertain, if they lack hope, if they are selfish, create a society which is kind of sad and filled with sorrow, filled with conflict, but that Christianity can be an engine for deeper faith, deeper hope, deeper love, and this would include also peace. Is Christianity a religion that makes a positive influence on the lives of human beings in the world? Absolutely. I think that can be seen... Um in history of uh, Western civilization and, and how Christianity uh, influenced it and formed uh, Europe as, uh, or at least as we used to know it, because of course now it, it is changing so drastically. But um, I strongly believe that uh, Christianity and Christ himself um, are able to transform uh, life of any human being, and I and I say this from my own experience in many ways because I was I was I haven't always been a Christian. I came to faith about 13, 14 years ago. So um, I think this applies to many people who uh, had come to meet Christ in their lives, and they they've seen how how their lives uh, have changed. Yeah, I, I think someone said that humanity or the human being is the creature who isn't himself or herself unless he or she transcends himself or herself. So we have an, a paradoxical characteristic that we long for the eternal and we long for the holy and we long for the infinite. And that if we stop ourselves from seeking that or going towards that, we no longer fulfill our own nature. What do you think of that? Well, I think as many church fathers used to say that we only um, achieve the goal in many ways of what achieve the state that uh, of, of our human nature that God had intended for us uh, through faith in Christ, because we truly then become um, proper human beings in the divine sense uh, of this work. Yeah, and I suppose it is Christian teaching, and I've been studying the church and writing about the church now for 40 years, and I, I knew Pope Benedict fairly well and followed Pope John Paul II and have been following Pope Francis. And these teachers say that the very life of Christ is what's communicated by the sacramental system of the church, by the liturgies, by communion, and 
in some ways it's a challenge to an entirely secularized society. And therefore I see this project of Budapest, Hungary, a new platform proclaiming Christ as very interesting and exciting as a kind of statement about the nature of man and the nature of our society and where it's going. Do you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. Um, the channel that we're running has very different programs on it. Uh, for instance, there is a uh, program focused entirely on news, religious news, but then there is a, um, there's a program uh, that focuses on the basic tenets of the Christian faith. Um, we mm -hmm. upload sermons of Metropolitan Hilarion, um, or, but there's also a um, show uh, that focuses entirely on the conversations between Metropolitan Hilarion and, and Rod Dreher, where they discuss biblical scholarship, uh, Christian theology, and uh, whether Christianity is still relevant in the modern world. So just that topic that you've spoken about. Well, that's very interesting. We have on our screen now some of the shots from your website, and we see Rod Dreher and Bishop Metropolitan Hilarion in discussion. I think we'll play a clip from that, but I should note, Rod is an American. He comes from Louisiana, and he was a prominent American Christian writer and voice for the American conservative but he's moved to Budapest, Hungary. And now he's working with Metropolitan Hilarion on this website, in these conversations. So I find that of great interest. And I think people who are studying cultural history will find it of great interest. So let's listen to a few words here. Hello, I'm Rod Dreher, writer, journalist, and Orthodox Christian. And welcome to a series of conversations with Metropolitan Hilarion Alfeyev about Orthodox life and faith. Vladika, we will begin today with a discussion of your six volume uh, study of the life of Jesus. Maybe we can start by asking, why did you write a six volume series of books about Jesus? After all, the world is full of books about Jesus. The initial source of inspiration for me was the book by uh, Pope Benedict XVI, Jesus of Nazareth. I read this book, I liked it very much. I thought it was quite uh, a courageous uh, step for uh, the Pope and he was not yet uh, Pope Emeritus, he was an uh, acting Pope. It was uh, quite courageous for him to write a book on Jesus Christ because... All right. I think, uh, uh, Philip, that's a taste the first, okay. a first touch of water on our lips of these conversations. And they center, of course, on Jesus Christ, but they have three poles, three protagonists alongside of Christ, Rod Dreher, an American, Metropolitan Hilarion, a Russian Orthodox Bishop. And we have to ask you about his removal from Moscow to Budapest. And then the figure of Pope Benedict XVI, who was an inspiration, a Catholic Pope who was an inspiration for a Russian Orthodox Metropolitan, and Rod Dreher, who was a Protestant for a while, then he became a Catholic, and then he converted to Orthodoxy. So in this brief clip, we have a kind of cross current of the work of the Holy Spirit in the early 21st century in a city like Budapest, in a country like Hungary, in a Europe which is, which is seeking its way, and in a world which is longing for deeper peace, deeper truth, deeper beauty. And you are leading this project to bring Jesus Christ into the center of this entire process. Can you talk about any of the things I just mentioned? Um. I think the uh, I think it's it's quite evident from what is going on um, right now that the world is going through a very serious international crisis. But this is not so much a geopolitical crisis, not only, but also I think a spiritual uh, crisis. And in in the context of what's going on, I think it is especially important to uh, speak to people about. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, 
and uh, his person and his teachings. Uh, this is our goal, ultimately. We um, don't uh, preoccupy ourselves so much with, with politics, church politics, um, or anything else of that sort. Uh, we focus on the basic tenets of the Christian faith, on the teaching of the church, um, on uh, the person of Jesus. Uh, because we, first Metropolitan, Rod, myself, and everyone else on our team, we, we strongly believe that if people get to meet Christ, their lives will, will change. And uh, had the world known Christ, really known him, it would have been a different place. So that's, that's what our project is, is, is all about, really. And it's not specifically orthodox in the sense that we um, focus purely on, on orthodox theology. Many things that we uh, speak about uh, on, on our programs are common for us uh, as Christians, for Orthodox, for Catholics, for Protestants. Um, the belief in the Trinity, in the divinity of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the inspiration of the Bible, um, all those uh, things we share. And um, uh, this is what we base our uh, channel on. All right. I just wanted to ask about the removal of Hilarion from his post, really as the foreign minister or the external affairs minister of the Russian Orthodox Church of Moscow, the Patriarchate of Moscow, down to Budapest. And I do think he's done almost nothing publicly at all since he was moved almost a year ago. But this is the first public gesture that he's made. Is this true? Um, only to a certain extent. Uh, uh, perhaps this is one of the first openly public gestures in the English-speaking world, um, but certainly not in the Russian-speaking world, where uh, we have a Russian version um, of, of the Jesus Portal channel. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that is being updated regularly on, on, on a daily basis. Um, Metropolitan is very much involved in, in, in other work. He makes uh, documentaries about uh, prominent church figures and uh, figures of art. Uh, so all of that is, is still being in production and is being produced and uploaded on, on various platforms. Um, so he's been very active. It's just that his line of work at the moment is um different to what he used to do before when he was the chairman of the department for external church relations but just like when he was the chairman of the uh, uh, department for external church relations um he focused on he tried to focus on the person of christ as much as possible likewise he does the same now okay philip uh, we've known each other for some years yes. we are now a little bit older and we are hoping to bring some good thing to birth in the world with our words, our writings, our teaching. You've been leading a group of young people over the years where you pray together. I met you in Moscow. I saw these very beautiful young people around you. Are you continuing that work? I am. Yeah, I am continuing. But uh, since now I'm based in Budapest, uh, I suppose I'm doing that remotely. Uh, but the, commu the, the community of young people, young Orthodox believers whom you met several years ago in Moscow still exists and uh, uh, it's still growing, especially, especially now. People need meaning in their lives and uh, there's no greater meaning than the one we find in, in, in the person of Christ. Yeah, man does not live by bread alone, but by sure. every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. But do you think Buddhist and Hungary are emerging as a place of Christian renewal in our world? Um, I, I think so. I think so. Um, certainly, Hungary has become one of the bastions of, uh, of Christian values in uh, Central and Western Europe, um, largely thanks to um, the current prime minister uh, of, of the country. And uh, we hope that it will continue this way. We've met many people here, uh, young um, Christians, uh, who think that the future of their country is Christian. 
I must say also you have a cardinal in the Catholic Church who's the Archbishop of Budapest and Estragon, the old primatial see of Hungary, whom I know, Peter Erdo. And some people say that he's a man who conceivably could be elected the next pope in Rome. Is he aware of this project and uh, how does he view it? Um, we haven't really cooperated with, him, with the cardinal uh, just yet. Um, hopefully in the near future we will produce interviews uh, with him on, on, on his um, understanding of, of, of the current stance, uh, spiritual stance of the world. Um, but since our project is in many ways pan-Christian in the sense that the message um, uh, that, that, that we proclaim is one for all Christians, I am personally positively sure that um, he uh, will approve of it, but what, okay. what, let's let's see what the future holds for uh, for our cooperation with the cardinal. All right, I just have two last questions. One, Pope Francis is supposed to make a trip to Budapest in about ten days. Uh, will you be covering that trip? Is it an important thing? Why is he coming to Hungary? Um, we will certainly be covering that trip. Uh, I believe. Um, now, why exactly is he coming to Hungary is, is, I think, something that you perhaps know better than I do. Um, I'm not uh, entirely familiar with all the details of how he certainly uh, plans his uh, foreign visits and trips. Um, but I think it is incredibly significant that um, he's coming to Hungary right now because I think the Hungarian uh, leaders uh, have been... Um, among the few European leaders who have consistently been calling for peace in the world. All right. Uh, and it's important that the Pope um, should come and, 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 and talk to them and meet them. All right. Then the, that's an important word, peace. We all long for peace. We long for peace in our personal lives and certainly in any condition of war. Now, you mentioned that when you were young, you converted. I want you to just tell our viewers, what does it mean to convert? What, how do you meet Christ and what effect does that have on you? And we'll leave it on the spiritual dimension. What is the human soul longing for? And how did that come to pass in your own life? Can you just give us a little insight? Um, I think one of the parables that the Lord Jesus Christ um, is using in the gospel is the parable of, of, of the pearl which he compares to the kingdom of God. Um, that when a man uh, found this pearl, he was ready to sell everything that he had uh, in order to acquire that um, treasure. And I think this is what uh, could be applied to, 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 to our Christian faith. Uh, it changes our lives completely. And uh, so many theologians um, constantly repeat that um, uh, repentance comes from the Greek term metanoia, which means the complete change of mind. Um, one gets to know Christ, uh, inevitably this person's life will change. Um, and sometimes it, it, it changes over a short period of time, sometimes it takes longer, um, but a true meaning comes and uh, illumines the, the life of such person. And I think uh, this is what drew me to Christ, and this is what draws so many of uh, young people and adults to uh, the person of Jesus uh, now. Yes, Philip, It's uh, thank you for those words. It's uh, Easter Sunday in the Orthodox tradition. It's actually a great privilege that you take time out of your feast day to speak with us. But we both thought it was important to choose this moment to present your new platform to the world. And we think it's going to be of great importance and we hope it bears great fruit. Thank you so much for joining thank us. You. And thank we'll be back me. with you. Yes, thank you so much and happy Easter. Happy Easter.